welcome back so we have been looking at how to count using recurrences so stepping um, back a little so we have been looking at combinatorics which is a branch of mathematics involving counting and the typical question is how to count the cardinality of a set and here we mostly talk about the case when the set is given implicitly and not explicitly that the set is described in words and i want to know how many elements are there in the set a typical example is how many elements of a universe satisfies a certain set of conditions or how many ways can i draw an element from the universe that satisfies a certain set of conditions So here are some of the examples that we have already seen and how to tackle them. In fact, the big problem of counting is that the, the, all the problems are unique and one need to apply a technique that fits it. Counting is in fact one of the most challenging subjects in mathematics and big names in mathematics has also work on this particular area and we will be showing you some tricks and tools of how to count so one of the thing that we looked at is how to select k objects from n objects and in that case we looked at whether the order in which we select the elements matter and whether we can select a same object multiple times and for all the four cases we came up with a solution which was a compact nice beautiful solution like something like the n factorial by k factorial times n minus k factorial in this case now similar problem was how to distribute n balls into k bins and here also there are multiple cases to be looked at namely whether the bins are distinguishable or whether the balls are distinguishable or whether the ordering in the bins matter or whether some of the bins can remain empty and so on right now and even in this cases also we came up with a certain set of answers to all the various cases and they are mostly compact in the sense that we have some idea about how to how to, uh, what are these values are and we use all these tricks to solve this set of problems the final problem was this problem of how many zero one strings of length n are there that does not contain any consecutive zero and the tech, way in which we did this problem is that we started with the notation of tn being the number of zero one string of length n that does not contain any consecutive zero we proved that t1 equals to 2 t2 equals to 3 this we did by pure counting and then we proved that tn is equals to tn minus 1 plus tn minus 2 and this in fact gave us a procedure of computing tn of course we left it in the case that can we find a nice expression for tn and we will come back to this particular question later on in the next videos but the main idea was that we basically converted the problem of counting into a recurrence relation in other words we converted it into some a sequence of numbers so that we have a set of initial conditions and we can uh, any further term is defined as a function of the preceding terms right so here are the set of initial equations and here is the thing where it's a recurrence relation where the tn is decided is 
um, written as a function of t, tn minus 1 and tn minus 2. Now, now record installations have been extensively used in various subjects and in fact they are one of the very strong ways of modeling problems particularly counting problems and solving reconciliation is also a big part problem a big part of this subject now in this video we will be looking at one more problem and see how we can model it using recurrence relation the topic the problem is called the tower of hanoi problem and the main idea is that you have three poles and n disks of different size so let me show you the picture so something like this you have three poles and you have these n disks here these are the n disks one two three four and they are arranged in such a way that the smallest one is on top the largest one is on the bottom and so the next this one is this one is bigger than this so the, the one so it is basically arranged in a in decreasing form and your goal is to somehow place all these uh, things all these end disks into this second one into this one to this and what you can do you can remove one at any point of time you can remove one disk from here and put it anywhere but you cannot put a bigger disk on a smaller disk okay so let me go on it sorry there are three posts and n disks of different size each disk has a hole through the center so that it fits on a post. At the disk, at the start, all n disks are on the post one. The disks are arranged by size, so the smallest is on the top and the largest is on the bottom. The goal is to end up with all the n disks in the same order on a different post. In a single move, one can move one disk from one post and place it to the another post and at no point can one place a bigger disk over a smaller disk. Question is how many steps will be taken to move n disks from post number 2 to any other post. So this is the typical picture of Tower of Hana and it's like the game that kids play but you cannot place a bigger disk on top of a smaller disk on any of the posts. So question is that how many ways can you make the move? So for the doing the counting, the typical way of doing it is again let HN be the number of steps required to move n disks. Now if h is the number of steps required to a and move n disks, how many, so can we say something about this h n? What about h1? So h1, since I don't have, I cannot draw this, so I will just draw them as, as numbers, okay. So I have say 3, post and I have this number one. Now of course if I have to place this one in this next the pole, I just need to pop this one out and plus it in the next one. So clearly h1 equals to 1, right? And this is the trivial thing. What about h2? h2 is interesting. Right. So I have these three poles, say, in the first one I have one and then two. How can I move this one, two to the second pole? So of course the first thing that I have to do is I have to move this first thing 
and I move it to the first one. So I have one made one move. Then I move the second one to the second. So I make another move one. And in the third, I make I move the first one back to the second one. So it is one more move and so. So good. So I make so number of H2 is actually equals to 3. Let's see do one more example. What about H3? So here I have 1, 2 and 3. I need to move this 1, 2, 3 to the next one. Now I know how to move 1, 2 to the second pole. Maybe I can also move it to the second, third pole, right? So I can move 1 to here, 2 to here, then I move 1 from here to here. So I have till now made 3 moves, right? 3. Then I make move this number 3 to the second one. I have made one more move, four moves. And now I move one to here. Then I move two to here. And I move the one to here. So I have made Initially, I had made one, two, three. Then I made one more move. Then I made two more moves. So, namely, I have made seven moves all total. So, H3 is seven. Now, like this, if I keep on continuing and say, if I know H1 to Hn minus 1, can I compute Hn? And that is the question to be asked. So let's see first here. First of all, can I get an upper bound on HN? If you remember what we did for the case of H3, let's see what was done. We first used HN minus 1 step to move the top N minus 1 discs from the first pole to the third pole, right? That we can do because that's the definition of Hn minus 1. Then I move the nth disk, the top bottommost disk to the first, from the first pole to the second pole. And then again I move the n minus 1 of them to on top of the second pole. So sorry, this is not third pole, this should be second pole. This is second pole. Right? And this is also not the first pole, it's on the third pole. So I had it on the third pole, from the third pole I moved it to the second pole. So in other words, total number of steps that I made was, of course, less than 2 times Hn minus 1 minus 1. So what we have is that the minimum number of steps required is less than or equal to 2 times Hn minus 1 minus 1. One. Now, unfortunately, this is just an upper bound. Can we get a lower bound? Or in other words, is it possible that this number HN is strictly less than, sorry, I made a mistake. This is plus one, of course. Can it be strictly less than Hn 2 times Hn minus 1 plus 1. And let's prove that it cannot be. So, okay, why it cannot be? So, consider an algorithm that moves the end disk from the first pole to the second pole. Right? 
consider the time when the nth disc was moved. Of course, at some point of time, the, the last disc was moved from the first pole to the second pole. Now, before that move, it must have been the case that this top n minus 1 must have been moved from the first pole to the third pole. Why? Because when I moved it from, when I moved the, the, uh, the, the biggest disc from the first pole to the second pole, the first pole must have been empty other than that. And since the biggest disc cannot be placed on top of any of the other discs, so the second pole must also have been empty, right? So the n minus one this must have been sitting all of them in the third pole, right? And of course, to complete the game, after I move the n disc to the second pole, the n minus one this must have been moved from the third disc to the second pole, third pole to the second. So the number of steps that must have been made here is hn minus 1 and hn minus 1 and this one. So hn must have made hn minus 1 here, hn minus 1 here and the 1 move here. So it is 2 times hn minus 1 plus 1. So in other words, what I get is that from the early, from the previous slide and this slide, that hn is actually equal to two times hn minus one. So thus, for counting the number of steps required to move any disk, I have h1 equals to one, I have h2 equals to three, and hn equals to two times hn minus one plus one. So as you can see here, we can clearly write down here now that okay, h3 equals to 2 times h2 plus 1, which is 7, number, sorry, h4 is 2 times h3 plus 1, which is 15, h5 is 31, and so on and so forth. So I can keep on doing this thing again and again and get some value. Question is that, is there a nice expression for hn? Or in other words, instead of just, just by, instead of just computing hn in brute force manner like this, is there a way of computing hn directly? So we have seen two examples of how to solve this uh, counting problem using recurrence relation. Now there are many other recurrence relation that appears in real life. Of course we have seen this the one, this is the one that we saw for the case of 0 1 to 0 1 string without any consecutive zeros. We also saw this one. Now if I change the, the initial conditions, for example in the first case I have changed the initial conditions to something like this f1 equals to 1, f2 equals to 2, this is the famous Fibonacci sequence. Then we have things like okay, b1 equals to 1 and b1 equals to b n over 2 plus 1. This is something that arises from binary search, it's called it's an algorithm. Uh, we have a, mn equals to 2 times mn by 2 plus n. This comes from what is called as merge sort algorithm. So various algorithms produce different types of such equations. And the equations are much more complicated like this where cn is a sum of square of them and these are called Catalan numbers. Now, these are examples of recurrence relations. Recurrence relations, as you can see, is a, where the nth term is written as the function of the previous terms, as in this case. Now, there are techniques of solving these recurrence relations and getting a compact form for these recurrence relations. 
they are essential for not only counting but also for algorithms, for analysis of algorithms, for uh, various other subjects of math. In the next video, we will be looking at techniques of solving this recurrence relation.